morning, good morning, good morning to all of the saints of God everywhere. Greetings all to our first friends. I am Pastor Vivian, the pastor of the Church of God by Faith in Baltimore, Maryland, through one North Strip Street. It's just good to see you uh, this morning and, and knowing that God has spared us to meet again because we realize that it's his mercy and his grace that we are all here. Amen, amen. For this is the Lord that has made. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that was in me, hallelujah, praise our God. But before we get into our lesson this morning, we want to uh, ask God blessings upon his blessing upon all of us today. Pray especially for Ukraine and our sisters and brothers over there. They are undergoing some things, and uh, certainly we know God is able to bring peace out of the future. Amen. God, we thank you right now for your blessing. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for life, health, and strength today. Thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. In the name of you, we know that you are God that cannot lie. You declare in your word before heaven and earth, for your word fail, heaven and earth will pass. Thank you for the promises, God. You got made many promises to us, God. We thank you for them all in the name of Jesus. God, we come down to behalf of our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. Oh, God, they was under attack in the name of Jesus. We realize, God, it is the work of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, we know that you was able to intervene. We pray that you give them comfort, God, give them cover in the name of Jesus. Realize, God, that evil spirit have seduced the man that's in charge there. Putin, we pray, God, that you touch his mind. Know that you're able to change it, God. You change Nebuchadnezzar's mind, God. You can change this man's mind. In the name of Jesus, spare the lives of the people there. Innocent young men and women, boys and girls, God, dying for no reason at all. We pray that you touch it and deliver it in the name of Jesus. God, we know you're going to do it. Not only for Putin, God, we Praying for our president in the name of Jesus. Oh God, everyone that's in authority to God, that they will consult you of the matters that they body into God. Help them to realize God, the only time, the time they're going to find peace, we invite you into their affairs in the name of Jesus. Do it for us, God. We give your name the praises, honor and glory shall be thine. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Certainly we want to keep our sisters and brothers in prayer that, uh, that God will continue to shine, give them cover, comfort in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We want to look at a scripture today that I think we all familiar with. And uh, that's in Colossians third chapter. Uh, Verse 15, just that one verse that we're concerned about. And it said that, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Amen. We, we have never witnessed so many unthankful people that we were witnessing the last week of days. And people that look like this taking everything for granted. But I think the Bible teaches us in all things to give thanks, even in the pandemic and the, and the turmoil of this world right now. We got to thank God because he's covering us in his blood. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, God. I want you to understand today that, that God has not forgotten about us. Even with this uh, trouble that's over there in Ukraine, God have not forgotten about us. He's still loves to show them. So our concern today is with uh, Senator, our thought today on uh, the peace of God. 
peace of God. Amen. If you ever notice now, how man is always searching for peace. And every time he searches for peace and think that he has secured it, something else break out. The world will offer you a counterfeit peace, but it is fleeting. It simply doesn't last what the world gives you. But the peace that God gives us, the world can't give it to us. And this is the peace we're looking for. We're looking for the peace of Jesus Christ. And he promised to give that to us. Amen. Before you know it, and the world give you peace, and, and it's supposed to be peace, and in their eyes, but when the world give it to you, you are back in the same rut. And again, here you go, out in the world searching for peace. But my sisters and brothers, you'll never find it out there in the world. It's like a revolving door, and, and you're sick of it. Every time you turn around, you think you've got peace, and, and, and right back in the sun, it's in a circle. Well, right back out there in the world, and all everything that the world has offer you and try to uh, counterfeit and make you think that you got peace, it doesn't do a thing, it just revolve right back where you was in the beginning. Hallelujah. Is it, is it lasting and, and is it so soothing the peace that God gives us? It's different. It's, it's a peace that everlasting and is soothing and comforting and relieving in is actually beyond our understanding. Amen. Paul says in in Philippians, rather, chapter 4, verse 7, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall absolutely, listen, absolutely keep or guard your hearts and minds, which is your thoughts, through who? In Christ Jesus. At times you, you feel so peaceful. I, I know I have. Anybody ever been there? Times I felt so peaceful. Sometimes I get up in the morning and look like I'm full of nothing but peace. Sometimes I just sit and text my children and let them know I'm so peaceful this morning. I feel like a million dollars. I feel like a king. I'm peaceful. That you won't even, but the peace that God gives us, you won't understand that. Sometimes when we feel like that, we don't understand what that is. We don't understand. All we know, we just feel a peace in our hearts and our spirit. You can apprehend it, but listen, you cannot comprehend it. Amen. You can you can under, you can get old to it, but you don't know the how powerful it is. Amen. That's God's love and will for every born again believer. Amen. But how do we get this peace? This is the big question. This is $64,000 question. How do we get this peace? It's simple. We must do the will of God. And that means to do what the Bible tells us to do. Simple. Plain and simple. Do what the Bible tells us. I know it's a fight, but did you got to understand you're in a war. Your flesh is warring against the spirit. The spirit is warring against the flesh. The flesh don't want you to do the will of God. We don't argue with God, y'all. We simply do what he says. Amen. And then our lesson again says that, and let the peace, let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. You don't have to force it, but just let it. Just yield yourself to God. As, a, uh, as, as Paul said, and leave your body as a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable unto God. You don't have to try to make peace in your heart, but just you yourself to God, and God will bring it about, bring about peace in your heart. Again, how do we apprehend the peace of God? How do we apprehend the peace of God? Isaiah said in the 26th chapter, verse 3, Thy will, if the, thy will keep him in perfect peace, who mind, this is the way you do it, whose mind is stead on thee, because he trusts in thee. 
You trust God for everything. You trust God. Peter said he has given us all things pertaining to life. We got to trust him for that. Amen. That is y'all. That's how you apprehend it. We must stay with our mind on God. Keep our minds stay on God. This requires some work on our part to do it. And that work is concerning the renewing of our minds. Renewing you. You can't have the same mind you have when you're in the world. No, God won't share that. you got to renew your mind. Realize who you are. Realize who brought you into the family of God. Then how you renew, how you renew your mind. We must put on thoughts of Jesus Christ if ever we are going to experience the peace of God in our life. We must take on the thoughts of Jesus. Amen. Paul says in Romans 13 and 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust there are. There it is, y'all. Plain and simple. You cannot, you cannot play with the flesh. If you try it, honey, it, it, it'll stop you from doing the will of God. But you got to put your mind stayed on God. Amen. The word put you, put you, listen at that. The word put you literally mean, literally mean to put on the same thoughts in your mind that Christ had in his mind. And what thoughts were that? They were the thoughts of God and God only be known through his word. They were the thoughts of God and God only, nobody else to be known through his word. God is, God is his word. So we must, as it is written in the second Timothy, Chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study. Take some time to study God's word. It's all right to read it, but the Bible says, with all thy reading, get yourself some understanding. And the only one that can give you the understanding of the written word of God is the Spirit of God Himself. He's the one that inspired me into right. He inspired men to write. They wrote as God inspired them without putting any of their, their thoughts and minds in it. Amen. Because this our life depends on this. Let me tell you something here. And, and, and I I would like to, to for this to sink deeply into your heart. As deeply as possible. Studying God's word is fun, y'all. Hallelujah. It's fun to study God's word. When you can push all the pride aside, which is actually fear, you will actually enjoy studying God's word greatly. Oh, it'll thrill your soul, honey. I'm doing it now for 40 years. Why? I don't get paid any monetary reward for studying are teaching not from people. God meets all my needs. Not some, but all of my needs. And then some. I get the biggest thrill out of learning all the promises in the Bible. I search, I try to find God's promise. And I get a thrill out of all the promises that he has made. There, and there are over 900 of his promises. How many do you know? Have you took the time to study, to research, and find out how many promises God has made to you and I? There's over 900 of them. Amen. Possibly more, but that's my research. Amen. The word of God is only truth in the world. There's no other truth beside it. When it comes to your soul and and things pertaining to your life. There is no other truth that no man can doctor up uh, that was that will suffice other than the word of God. I know sometimes men they try to rewrite the Bible and everything, 
but they'll never uh, fix it like God got it. Amen. Why in the world? Somebody tell me. Why in the world would you want to make any other learning a priority over God's perfect word? Why would you want to do it? It makes no sense to me. In fact, it is uh, unsound thinking, I think. And this is me. You may not think that, but it's unsound thinking. Amen. Only God's word will make your mind sound and whole. Only God's word. Amen. You'll make your mind sound and whole. I give you whole thought. God give you whole thought. His word will give you complete thought with clarity. Not just have like the world give you. That, that, that have thoughts. You have you think a thing and, and cut you off at the time you really need some clarity of it. Listen what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, more cowardice. No, God didn't give us that. When we face obstacles, when we face challenges in our life, God didn't give us the spirit of cowardice. They're not to face it, but he gave us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You don't have to try to turn your back on nothing that you face. You got what it take. God give it to you. I believe the creative life knows the best way to live it. How about you? He knows the best way to live it. The persistent study of God's word will allow you to have great, great peace in your life. Great and greater peace in your life. The study of God's word. And this is what we need, especially in a time like this. We need to stay in that Bible. We need to stay in there, stay in God's faith, study in his word. Because this is the only thing going take us through a time like we're in now. Why would you want to settle for less? Why do you want to settle for less? God's word make the greatest men and women alive today and teach you how to live life in the fast lane. I know sometimes we say we need to slow down, but God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. And his word will teach us how to do it. There's a surprise around the corner, uh, around every corner, y'all. Why would you want to live your life selling for what the world has to offer and become a, a cow? Because what they have to offer, you try to survive on that, you're going to be challenged with it. And if you ain't got what it takes, you're going to turn and run. But with what God, what God say, he didn't give you that kind of fear. That's what the world gave you. Amen. In your heart, you know, you know, you do not want to settle for a counterfeit dream and desire and aspiration while the true God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives only, nobody but Him gives only genuine peace. Amen. He said, the peace I give you, the world can't give it to you. There's no forfeit, no counterfeit peace. This is a real peace that Jesus gives. Not counterfeit, something that, that looks like peace and falls apart, but this is real peace. And God giving your heart right in the midst of a trial, right in the midst of challenge, right in the midst of this troubled world. It's real peace in your heart. You got no reason to be fearing what's happening. Amen. God give you real peace and, and, and stand with that. Every man and woman is, is searching for truth. And there is only one source of truth. Everything else is simply facts and are very often unreliable. Hallelujah. God's words work with scientific and, and uh, precision and uh, uh, mathematical accuracy every time. If God said it, it will happen just like God said. 
and I got to stand with that. Amen. Now, this is me, y'all. I, 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 I don't like that word standing on. No, uh, I like to stand with God's word. Now, if you're standing on God's word, you got two perfections under your feet. The devil and God's word. Now, which one you going to let go from under your feet? Let the word of God work and have free court. You got the devil under your feet, then you can't have God under your feet too. Oh, hallelujah. That's that's living gospel, y'all. Amen. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man. Hallelujah. That he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Whatever God promised, he's able to form it, y'all. If he speak it, it's going to happen. I guarantee you that. What do you mean you guarantee me? I guarantee you because the word said it. And I stand with what that word said. If he said it, honey, I believe it. I stand with it. I activate it in my life. I believe God will do it. Hallelujah. When God tells you something, he always keep his word. You see, he cannot lie. It's impossible. He said that, that in his word, he said, before I lie, heaven and earth will pass away. Amen. He can't lie, y'all. Stand on his word. That ought to be comfortable to each of us. Amen. The word of God says that every man is a liar. So whose arm are you going to put your trust in? Man's or God's? This is your free will decision. In Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, uh, he's Paul, he says, there, right in here, Paul said, uh, I said, Paul, for the word of God is quick and powerful. It's living, it's living and it's energetic. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the divine and the sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner. It's a critic or a judge of what? Of the thoughts, of our emotions, and intents of all the ideas of our heart. Amen. This scripture is saying, is saying that you need God's word to know what you really want to do with your life. For it search the scripture, for in them, if you think you have life, you need God's word. You need his word. Ask God, confront God, ask him, what am I to do with my life? I found the scripture to be most amazing when completely understood all of my life. I never I never could find uh, my great interest in my vocation in life. Hallelujah. I tried almost every job I met. One day I said, within my soul, I said within my spirit, that's enough. I, I, I want to do something with my life, but then I'm finding out that my little thoughts is failing me. Have you ever heard children say, I said when I, when I was a, a youngster going to school? You ever hear them say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in college, I'm going to college, but I haven't decided. I don't know what I want to do right now. But let me tell you, that's the way I was. I was searching. Wanted to find out what would I, what can I do with my life? Amen. Until I made my mind, that's enough. I'm not doing that no more. The Bible tells me in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path in every area of your life. He'll direct your path. I know he did. I said to myself, I started to work and study my Bible. Uh, used to 
to stay off and work sometime, take off and study my Bible and biblical research and, and teaching material every day. A relentless passion for it. I had a, a, a passion for that. Relentless, I'll take off from my job and vacation time. I'll take off from my job, sick leave days. I'll take off from my job when I was in the workforce. Actually to study God's word for direction for my life. I wanted that. And guess what? By having a passion like that, study it and ask God to show me what am I to do with my life. And God showed me that my true purpose in life was to teach his word to others. What a relief it was for me to receive this. Hallelujah. It was a relief for me to receive this revelation from God Almighty. I'm running around all that say. Running around, want to know what I can do with my life. But I, I had to go back to the scripture and search the scripture and, and see what God told me that, that in all of your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your heart. I will direct your steps. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the word of God is a discern, it's a critic and judge of the intentions and all the ideas of our hearts. Can you imagine that? Hey, God knows your desire. He knows your thought. When you don't know, when you don't know what to do with your life, God knows what you need to do with it. But he's just waiting on you to acknowledge him, and he will direct you what to do with your life. You will never know what you really want to do as long as you rely on your own thoughts and the world tell you what to do and to manipulate you. Amen, amen. When you finally learn what you want to do and enjoy doing it, then you have peace. When you learn, when you finally learn the lesson, that you want to do what you want to do with your life and enjoy doing it. Then, and not until then, you will have peace. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verses 15, 16, and 17, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that do I. If then I do which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, and now then it is no longer I that do it, but sin that the well, you can't trust this flesh, honey. You can't trust it. You can't trust your own thoughts sometimes. You got to consult God in all of your ways. He didn't say this part. In all your ways, acknowledge me. Even the simplest thing that I think I know how to do, I still need to consult God. Have you ever tried to put a project together, you order something, and it, it requires you to assemble that thing? And you look at the picture and you think you know what to do with it. Do you know that every one of those boats, every one of those nuts they put in that packet got a, got a number to it, where it's supposed to go? And my wife had to teach me that. I ordered a, 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 a base, not a base, but I ordered a, a stand one time. And when they came together, it was required for me to put it together. So what I do, I look at the picture on the box. And I said, this go here, this go there, this go there. But I didn't worry about it. I didn't think about the nuts and the boats and things they had. And I fought, I fought, I fought until I couldn't fight no more putting it together. Then I get the instructions and read them. And when I got the instructions, read, read those instructions and follow it through, honey, that thing fell in place just like a, a glove. 
felt right in place. Waste all of my time doing that. Amen. But listen, you really should take a good look at these scriptures and read them over and over and over.